रिकॉर्डिंग बना दी So today's class is urogenital diaphragm. Urogenital diaphragm is a musculofacial partition across the pubic arch and separates the pelvic cavity from the anterior part of the pelvic outlet. So it is a musculofacial partition across the pubic arch and separates the pelvic cavity from the anterior part of the pelvic outlet. This anterior part of pelvic outlet, otherwise called urogenital triangle, is bounded in front by the lower margin of this emphasis pubis and arcuate pubic ligament. Behind by an imaginary, imaginary horizontal line joining two ischial tuberosities on each side by lower margin of the ischial pubic ramus. So here it is the in front, it is the urogenital triangle, the upper one, and lower one is the anal triangle. This urogenital triangle is bounded in front by the pubic symphysis and then posteriorly by the line joining the ischial tuberosities and then on either side by the ischiopubic ramus. Now the urogenital triangle is closed by the following structures from below upwards, superficial to deep. See when you are seeing this urogenital triangle the actually the pubic symphysis and the arch of the pubic symphysis is facing downwards so only when we are telling that the structures that are covering this arch of the pubic symphysis we have to say from below upwards it is not vertical it is almost a horizontal in situation so we are telling them they are coming from below upwards and superficial to deep. So the lowermost one or superficial is the skin, then fatty layer of superficial fascia, then membranous layer of superficial fascia, fascia collis, contents of superficial perineal pouch, perineal membrane or inferior fascia of erogenital diaphragm, then contents of deep perineal pouch and superior fascia of erogenital diaphragm. So we are having the skin, fatty layer of superficial fascia, membranous layer of superficial fascia, otherwise called fascia collis, then the contents of superficial perineal pouch. So this contains the uh, muscles and uh, certain vessels. And then perineal membrane or inferior fascia of erogenital diaphragm, contents of deep perineal pouch, nothing but the erogenital diaphragm, and superior fascia of the Eurogenital diaphragm. So here we are showing a coronal section, coronal section through urogenital triangle in male. So we are having skin as the outermost or inferior most, then the fatty layer of superficial fascia, then fascia collis that is membranous layer of superficial fascia, <coughs> contents of superficial perineal pouch. Then the perineal membrane, then the contents of deep perineal pouch and the superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm. These are from below upwards and then above this the superior fascia of the uh, urogenital pouch, I mean superior fascia of the deep peroneal pouch, we are having the prostate as its superior relation and the levator anae as its superior relation and anterior recess of ischiorectal fossa. These three are superior relations of this uh, deep perineal pouch. Deep perineal pouch is nothing but the urogenital diaphragm. Urogenital diaphragm is a musculofacial partition across the pubic arch and separates the pelvic cavity from the anterior part of pelvic outlet. So this urogenital diaphragm is a musculofacial partition across the pubic arch 
and separate the pelvic cavity from the anterior part of pelvic outlet. It consisting of two muscles, sphincter urethra, transverse perineae profundus. So two muscles are sphincter urethra and transverse perineae profundus. Two fascia are superior or inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm, including these muscles. Two muscles, two fascia. Now here we are showing the contents of the deep perineal pouch. See we are having this one is the uh, sphincter urethra deep fiber. These are deep fiber. These are the sphincter urethra superficial fibers. So, sphincter urethra superficial fibers and deep fibers. And we are having transverse of course there is a then this is the deeper structure wherein we are having deep transverse perineum is only seen here that is coming from the uh, arch that is the I mean escapopubic ramus towards the, the urethra. Now muscles. Sphincter urethra it encircles the membranous urethra and consisting of superficial and deep fibers. Superficial fibers arise from the transverse perineal ligament and adjacent pubic arch, passes backwards by the side of the urethra and are inserted into the perineal body. So here these are coming from the transverse perineal arch and the arch of the pubic symphysis and then they are going direct, um, directly by the side of the membranous urethra till there is the perineal body. D fibers arise from the inner surface of junction of ischiopubic ramus and from pudendal canal, pass horizontally to the midline to encircle the urethra and are continuous with the similar fibers of the opposite side. Transverse perineal profundus. Each muscle is situated behind the sphincter urethra, arises from the inner surface of the ramus of the ischium and is inserted into the perineal body. So transverse perineum muscle is situated behind the sphincter urethra. It is arising from the inner surface of the ramus of the ischium and is inserted into the perineal body where it mingles with the muscle of the opposite side. Nerve supply, both muscles are supplied by the muscular branches of perineal nerve. Facial components. Superior fascia, inferior fascia or perineal membrane. Superior diaphragm, it is the thin fascia covering the upper surface of the muscles of the erogenital diaphragm. Muscles is the sphincter urethra and the transverse perineal profundus and is derived from the pelvic fascia. This superior fascia is derived from the pelvic fascia and is covering the superior surface of this uh, muscles of the erogenital diaphragm. Then attachment. On each side, the inner surface of the scaphemic crevice and then continues with the obturator fascia. This superior fascia is attached to the inner surface of the scaphemic crevice on each side and then continues with the obturator fascia. In front and behind, it blends with the perineal membrane and closes the deep perineal sense. Deep perineal pouch is closed because this superior fascia and the perineal membrane are merging with each other. In the, anterior, in the anterior and posterior aspect of this urogenital diaphragm. In the middle, it is reflected by the side of the urethra and is continuous with the inferior fascia of the pelvic diaphragm. So, in the middle, it is continuous with the inferior fascia of the pelvic diaphragm. Inferior fascia or perineal membrane. It is a strong sheet of fascia which extends across the pubic arch and intervenes between the superficial, superficial and deep perineal pouches. It is triangular in shape and with its apex directed in front. In male, the perineal membrane is tough due to the attachment of the root of the penis and associated perineal muscles. Attachment. On each side, the inner surface of ischiopubic ramus above the attachment of crust penis. So, this inferior fascia or perineal membrane is also attached to the inner surface of the ischiopubic ramus above the attachment of the crust penis. In front, perineal membrane is thickened to form the transverse perineal ligament and is continuous with the superior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm around the sphincter urethra muscle. So as I told you, this anterior part of this urogenital diaphragm is closed 
because the superior fascia is merging with the perineal membrane in the anterior part of the sphincter urethral muscle. Now behind it is fixed to the perineal body in the midline and splits into two layers. The upper layer is continuous with the superior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm around the transverse perineal profundus whereas the lower layer is continuous with the fascia of the colis around the transverse perineal superficialis. So here we are showing this is the fascia colis and this is the transverse perineal superficialis. This is the perineal membrane. This is the transverse perineal profundus and then this is the superior fascia of the erogenital diaphragm. So this perineal membrane as it comes out, uh, it is divided into two, branches, two parts. One is going along the transverse perineal profundus and joining the superior fascia of the erogenital diaphragm. And the other one is encircling the transverse perineal superficialis muscle and joining the fascia colis of the abdomen, I mean superficial layer. Now, structures piercing the perineal membrane. At the base, two posterior scrotal are label vessels and nerves on each side. At the middle of the attachment at margin, deep artery of penis or clitoris. At the attached margin near the apex, dorsal artery of the penis. So, at the base, we are having two scrotal or label vessels. At the middle, we are having deep artery of the penis or clitoris. At the apex, we are having dorsal artery of penis or clitoris. In the midline urethra, about 2 to 3 centimeters behind the lower part of the symphysis pubis. So, here it is the uh, I mean, perineal membrane, perineal membrane which is pierced by the posterior scrotal arteries in the posterior part. In the middle part, it is the deep artery of the penis and in the upper part it is the dorsal artery of the penis. So these are the vessels that are piercing the deep perineal membrane. And of course we are having here membrane uh, piercing the center of it. In the male duct of bulbo urethral gland and artery to the bulb of penis on each side of the urethra. So in the male duct of bulbo urethral gland and the artery of bulb of penis are also on the side of the urethra seal. In the female, vagina behind the urethra is seen, whereas the structures piercing the urogenital diaphragm, urethra, in the female, vagina behind the urethra, only two structures. Relations of urogenital diaphragm, below contents of superficial perineal porch. So, urogenital diaphragm, as I told you, is nothing but the deep perineal pouch separated by the perineal membrane from the superficial perineal pouch. So, this perineal membrane, below the perineal membrane, we are seeing the contents of the superficial perineal pouch as its relations. Then, above apex of prostate or neck of the urinary bladder, So, uh, the relations in below it is the contents of superficial perineal pouch, above apex of prostate or neck of urinary bladder. Uh, this we have shown. So, this is the apex of the prostate or neck of urinary bladder, and then we are having the levator anae fibers, and then anterior is of the ischiorectal fossa as its superior relations of the urogenital diaphragm. This is the urogenital diaphragm which is made up of the sphincter urethrae and transverse perineal profundus muscle covered by the superficial fascia of the uh, urogenital diaphragm as well as the perineal membrane on the its inferior aspect. So this perineal membrane is separating this uh, 
superficial peritoneal pouch from the deep peritoneal pouch. So, anterior fibers of the both levator animals, anterior is of the ischiorator fossa. In front, a triangular gap between the arcuate pubic ligament and transverse peritoneal ligament transmits the following structures. A deep dorsal vein of penis or clitoris, dorsal nerve of penis or clitoris on each side of the vein. So here in front it is the deep dorsal vein of penis and dorsal nerve of penis. These are present in a triangular gap between the uh, transverse perineal ligament as well as the transverse pubis or ligament. And ar arcuate pubic ligament. So there is a triangular gap in front between the arcuate pubic ligament and transverse perineal ligament which is transmitting the deep dorsal vein of penis, dorsal nerve of penis and behind it is ischiorectal fossa and their contents. See we are saying the anterior recess of ischiorectal fossa as the superior relation of this erogenital diaphragm whereas behind this erogenital diaphragm you are seeing the ischiorectal fossa and its contents as its relations. Now actions of erogenital diaphragm. It supports the prostate or the bladder. In female, it constricts the vagina. It fixes the perineal body. The serogenital diaphragm supports the prostate or bladder in male. In female, it, const it constricts the vagina. It fixes the perineal body. Sphincter urethra exerts voluntary control of micturation and expels last drop of urine after bladder stops contraction. So, this sphincter urethra of the serogenital diaphragm express the last drop of urine after bladder stops contraction. In female, the urogenital diaphragm is less defined due to the presence of vagina and is predominantly fibrous. Hence, it is sometimes called as the triangular ligament. Next, we are having the superficial perineal pouch. So, this is a diagram of the superficial perineal pouch wherein we are showing this is the urogenital triangle from the pubic symphysis to the imaginary line drawn between the ischial tuberosities and then of course below we are having the anal triangle from the line between the ischial tuberosities to the almost sacrum and then we are having contents as contents root of clitoris and muscles associated with it then bulb of vestibule and surrounding muscles, then superficial transverse perineal muscles, branches of the internal pudendal artery, posterior labial branches, transverse perineal branches, posterior labial branches, then perineal branches of the posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh and greater vestibular gland. Superficial perineal pouch is an interfacial space stretching across the pubic arch and is situated below the perineal membrane. It is closed on all sides except in front. So, superficial perineal pouch is in between the facial layers and it is a space stretching across the pubic arch and is situated below the perineal membrane. It is closed on all sides except in front. Boundaries above it is the perineal membrane, below it is the fascia collis. On each side, inner surface of ischiopubic ramus. Behind, the pouch is closed by fusion of the perineal membrane with the fascia collis and around the transverse perineal superficialis. Okay, in front, the pouch is open and is continuous with the superficial inguinal space between the fascia of scarpa and appendages of the external oblique after passing deep to the darter's muscle and fascia of pharynx. Contents three muscles on each side, ischiocardinus covering the crust penis or crust clitoris, transverse perineal superficialis in the posterior part of the pouch. Now here we are showing this is the superficial perineal pouch. 
and uh, as, as its content we are having transverse perineus superficialis other contents are not shown here but the perineal membrane the inferior layer is coming in continuous with the fascia colis and then it is passing the space above this fascia colis is we are having this is the uh, superficial perineal pouch which is continuous into the scrotum then the I mean penis and then it is going towards the inguinal space and anti-abdominal wall. So this is the uh, contents of the superficial perineal pouch we are having this is the ischiocavernous muscle and then bulbospongiosus muscle and then transverse perineal superficialis. So we are having three muscles ischiocavernous, bulbospongiosus and then the transverse perineal superficial muscles. And of course perineal membrane is there, it is the uh, upper covering of this. I mean, uh, superficial perineal pouch. So, symmetrical half of bulbospongiosus is covering the bulb of penis and bulb of vestibule. That means, after ischiocavernosus, transverse perineal superficialis, the third one is the symmetrical half of the bulbospongiosus is covering the bulb of the penis and bulb of vestibule. All these muscles are supplied by the muscular branches of the perineal nerve. So now the first one is the ischiocavernous muscle. Each muscle arises from the inner surface of the junction of the ischiopubic ramus and is inserted into the sides and under surface of the crust penis or clitoris. So this ischiocavernous muscle is coming from the inner surface of the junction of the ischiopubic ramus. So this is the inner side of the ischiocavernous muscle coming from the inner side of the junction of the ischiopubic ramus and then going and covering the under surface and sides of the penis to the sides and under surface of the crust penis or clitoris. It compresses the cavernous space of the crura, impedes the venous return and thereby maintains the erection of the penis or clitoris. Now transverse perineal superficialis. Each muscle arises from the ramus of the ischium and is inserted into the perineal body. So this is arising from the ramus of the ischium and is inserted into the perineal body. It fixes the perineal body. Transverse perineal superficialis fixes the perineal body. Then bulbospongiosis. In male it is a bipennate muscle, covers the bulb of penis and the two symmetrical halves are united by median fibrous raphe. So bulbospongiosis is coming on either side. So two symmetrical halves, they are united by a median fibrous raphe. They cover the bulb of penis. In the female, it splits into two halves to embrace the vaginal orifice and covers the bulb of vestibule. So in female, it splits into two halves to embrace the vaginal orifice and cover the bulb of vestibule. Then origin. In male, it arises from the perineal body and median raphe. In female, it arises from perineal body only. So this is coming from the perineal body and the median raphe in male. Whereas in female, it is only from perineal body. Insertion in male, posterior fibers blend with the perineal membrane. The middle fibers covers the dorsal surface of the bulb and carpus pongiosum penis and forms an aponeurosis where they intermingle with the similar fibers of the opposite side. So middle fibers cover the dorsal surface of the bulb and carpus pongiosum penis and form an aponeurosis where they intermingle with the similar fibers of the opposite side. Anterior fibers cover the dorsal surface of carpus cavernosa and form an aponeurosis superficial to the deep dorsal vein of the penis. So anterior fibers cover the dorsal surface of scarpus cavernosa and form an aponeurosis superficial to the deep dorsal vein of penis. In the female, the fibers end in an aponeurosis 
on the dorsal surface of the carpora cavernosa superficial to the deep dorsal vein of clitoris action in both sexes the muscles compress the deep dorsal vein and helps erection of penis and clitoris in male it expels drops of urine from urethra and contracts repeatedly in ejaculation so this pelvic spongiosis contracts repeatedly in ejaculation now vessels three on each side two posterior scrotum or labial vessels branches of internal peroneal artery posterior scrotum or labial vessels branches of internal and transverse perineal vessel branches of the scrotal or internal peroneal artery so two vessels from scrotal or labial vessel, posterior scrotal or labial vessels branch of the internal peroneal vessel there is a transverse perineal vessel again branch of scrotal or internal peroneal vessel three vessels are there on each side then nurse three on each side two posterior scrotal or labial branches of perineal nerve and perineal branch of posterior femoral cutaneous nerve so posterior scrotal branch of the perineal nerve and perineal branch of the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve are the three nerves other structures crust penis or clitoris attach it on each side to the ischio pubic ramus crust penis or clitoris attach on each side to the ischio pubic ramus in male bulb of penis in the middle which is traversed by spongy urethra in female urethra and vagina in the middle bulb of vestibule and greater vestibular glands are present on each side of the vagina in female urethra and vagina in the middle bulb of vestibule and greater vestibular glands are present on each side of the vagina so those are the structures present in the superficial perineal pouch so main thing is there are about the uh, three muscles the carpus cavernosus then bulbous spongiosus transverse perineal superficialis and the three vessels three nerves and then we are having other structures like crust penis or clitoris then the in the male bulb of penis in the middle which is served by the spongy urethra in the female urethra and vagina in the middle then the bulb of vestibule and greater vestibular glands are present on either side of the vagina so that is the uh, superficial perineal pouch and which is covered superiorly by the uh, perineal membrane and inferiorly it is the fascia collis now applied anatomy if membranous urethra ruptures below the perineal membrane extra vestigial urine collects in the superficial perineal pouch which is closed on all sides except in front on further accumulation the urine passes forward deep to the deltoid muscle and fascia of penis and appears in the anterior abdominal wall in the superficial inguinal space between the fascia scarpa and appendages of the external oblique muscle the extra vestigial urine might extend as high as to the axilla but cannot reach the front of the due to fusion of the fascia of scarpa and fascia lata immediately below the inguinal ligament here so here this is the superficial perineal pouch we are seeing the transverse perineal superficialis here and we are seeing this in the fascia collis this is the fascia collis and of course this is the perineal membrane which is joining the fascia collis to close the posterior aspect and now this space is continuous along with the scrotum then along the uh, penis and then it is going to the anterior abdominal wall in the superficial inguinal space and it is going up to the axilla along in between the uh, fascia collis and the i mean the abdominal wall fascia penis and appears in the anterior abdominal wall in superficial inguinal space between the fascia scarpa and appendages of the external oblique muscle so this is between the fascia scarpa and appendages of the external oblique muscle then this extra vestigial urine is extra vestigial urine might extend as high as the axilla but cannot reach the front of the thigh 
due to the fusion of the facial scarpa and facial lata. So facial scarpa and facial lata are fused. So this cannot reach the front of the thigh immediately below the inguinal ligament. So there is an upright aspect of this superficial perineal pouch. So to have a small revision, first thing is We should consider this urogenital triangle first. This is the urogenital triangle. Urogenital triangle between the pubic symphysis and the imaginary line joining the ischial tuberosities. And of course, it is uh, anteriorly bounded by the pubic symphysis and either side bounded by the ischiopubic ramus and of course, inferiorly the the line joining the ischial tuberosities and then this erogenital triangle is closed by the following structures from below upwards it is skin fatty layer of superficial fascia skin it's a coronal section through erogenital diagram no? erogenital triangle skin fatty layer of superficial fascia fascia scarpa and then the fascia colis and then we are having uh, this one the contents of the superficial perineal pouch and then perineal membrane the contents of the deep perineal pouch then superficial uh, membrane superficial membrane of the, the superficial fascia of the superior fascia of the erogenital diaphragm and then superior relations of the erogenital diaphragm we are having the, the prostate the urethra then the fibers of the levator and anterior fibers then anterior recess of the ischiolateral fossa these things are the relation, superior relations of this I mean urogenital diaphragm or deep perineal pouch so we are having this is the superficial perineal pouch between the perineal membrane and fascia collis whereas this is the deep perineal pouch between the super, uh, superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm and the perineal membrane so this deep perineal pouch contains sphincter urethra and transverse perineal profundus so it is nothing but the erogenital diaphragm whereas this superficial perineal pouch this is having the uh, bulbocavernosus and bulbospongiosus uh, and then transverse perineal superficial muscles and some vessels and other things are there and uh, this is in between the perineal membrane and the, uh, the fascia cores. Of course, here we are showing the contents of deep perineal pouch. This is the uh, sphincter with the superficial fibers coming from the uh, pubic arch and going to the I mean, uh, perineal body, and then uh, transfer uh, deep fibers coming from the, the ischiopubic ramus and reaching the and surrounding the urethra. This is the uh, deep transverse perineal muscle and of course this is the ischiocavernous and then bulbospongiosis transverse perineal superficial these are the contents of the superficial perineal pouch hmm. here we are showing how this uh, layers again okay? this is the facial collis and this is the superficial perineal pouch with the transverse uh, perineal superficialis and this is the perineal membrane and this is the deep perineal pouch with the uh, transverse perineal profundus and of course sphincter urethra and this is the superficial fascia covering the this uh, urogenital diaphragm and of course it is its relations with the prostate urethra and other things and here we have to see that the perineal membrane which is covering the which is uh, separating the deep perineal pouch from the superficial perineal pouch is splitting at the posterior side and one is uh, bypassing i mean encircling the transverse perineal profundus muscle and reaching the superficial superior fascia of the erogenital diaphragm and other is 
encircling the transverse perineal superficial muscle and joining the fascia collis. So by it joining the fascia collis, this superficial perineal pouch is in continuous with the space between the fascia collis and ductus muscle and in the scrotum as well as in the main penis and then it is in continuous with the superficial immunal space and of course space in the anterior abdominal wall and till it reaches the axilla. Okay, this is uh, not sufficient. The contents of superficial perineal pouch we are showing the root of clitoris, bulb of vestibule, and then the ischial cavernosus, bulbospongiosus, transverse perineal superficial muscles. These things are shown. Here we are showing the contents of the superficial perineal pouch again. The bulbous pangiosis, the ischial cavernosis, transverse perine, superficialis. Here in the applied anatomy, again, if membranous urethral ruptures below the perineal membrane, extra visceral urine collects in superficial perineal pouch, which is closed on all sides except in front. On further accumulation, the urine passes forward deep to the deltas muscle and fascia of penis and appears in the anterior abdominal wall in superficial inguinal space between the fascia scarpa and aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle. The extravasated urine might extend as high as the axilla but cannot reach the front of the thigh due to the fusion of the fascia scarpa with the fascia lata immediately below the inguinal ligament. So that is the applied aspect. So thank you. What is it then? Right, thank you. Then I got a switch off here. Hmm. Oh, let me just switch.